Okay, we're gonna have some fruit and eggs and some guacamole, holy guacamole and toast. Today is Monday, June 8th. I started my day with a prayer. My quote is, what you do every day matters more than what you do once in a while. It's a five point breakfast, three points for my holy guacamole, two points for my Ezekiel toast, zero for the berries, eggs, tea, water, banana and grapefruit. So I still have 18 points left for the rest of the day. Well, good morning. Today is Monday, June 8th, and it's not really morning. It's the afternoon. Um, I don't know how to start because, you know what, when you watch it, it might not be morning. It might be nighttime, and then I'm telling you good morning. So what's a better opening for me? Everybody has such different openings, and I just think that mine is kind of sucky. But it's usually in the morning when I'm telling you that I'm good morning, but it's not really good morning. I had to get up, oh, today is, I told you, June 8th, and we have birthdays. Let's get those. I don't want to forget because, you know, sometimes I have a memory that uh, kind of slips away from me, but uh, today is Katie over at Witchy Woman. Today is Katie's birthday, so she gets a song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Katie. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Even the birds want to sing to you. Can you hear them? Those are those annoying birds. I just wish, I mean, I like I like birds. Obviously, I like birds because I'm feeding them, but this one bird is like yelling at the other birds. Just like, <sighs> he flew away. See, he knew I was talking badly about him. Anyway, um, and it's also my man, yeah, Steve Johnson. Mr. Johnson, it's your birthday, and you knew it. He's taking his love of his life. Anita over at Chit Chat Paddywhack, they're going to the uh, coast, I guess, or the seaside or something. I know they're going somewhere today to celebrate his birthday. And she put it on Facebook, so I can tell you he's 60. So he's entered a new set of numbers. Just as I'm leaving that set of numbers, he's entering it. So you better represent, Steve. You better represent, because I think I represented it pretty well. But now I have to represent... The 70s, <laughs> once, I, once I hit that in September. So Steve gets a song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Steve. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Don't let me down. Make the 60s really good because they were really good for me. I got back on track. I struggled. I struggled a lot. I struggled a lot. And I'm back struggling again. And um, I've... Um, I've just decided I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I really am not going to beat myself up about it because I wouldn't beat you up. Well, yeah. no, I wouldn't beat you up. I really wouldn't beat you up. It's just I uh, have come to the realization, and I've told you I'm dedicating this month to my mother. My mother passed away on March 1st of um, June uh, 2008. And um, when she was passing away, we all were... To, together we she had, at that point my mother lived with me she moved in with me in uh 94 my father passed away in 83 uh, my sisters mary and denise and my mother owned a house together and then um oh my daughter christy's coming because i got sophia for the night so this might be short but I'll, t I'll tell you this real quick story real quick and then i'll come back and tell you some more stuff later but um so uh they had bought a house together and then mary i had introduced mary to don because i worked with him and uh, they got married, and then obviously they went and lived on their own. And then Denise and my mother couldn't afford the house, so, so they sold the house. And my mother was going to go move to Florida to live with her sisters that lived in Florida. So she moved in with me on May 7th, which was her anniversary. And she was going to just stay with me for the summer. And then in September, she was going to move down uh, to Florida, Melbourne, uh, actually Indian Harbor, Indian Harbor Springs. She was going to move down there to be with um, her sisters. And then uh, she just ended up staying with me. So anyway, when she was uh, sick, uh, she, well, she had a heart attack, and then she moved in with me. No, she moved in with me before she had the heart attack. I'm getting confused now. No, she moved in with me when she was 68, and I thought she was old. I'm 69, I think I'm young. But anyway, so she moved in with me, and she was doing really well, and she then she got really sick. And uh, she ended up, she lived with my sister Denise from September of 2007 until she passed in March of 2008. 
But uh, on the when she was passing, when she was dying, we were all look here they come, here they come walking down the street. You get plenty of looks from everyone they meet. <laughs> hey hey, they're That's the right. monkeys. <laughs> all right, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Okay, I'm back. Um, Christy's still working from home, but uh, she wanted to um, have a break, I guess, in a way. So Sophia's going to spend one night. Sophia spent the whole summer with me last year, but uh, she can um, uh, work from home through the summer. So she's going to have her come here one day a week and to her grandma's one day a week. And then one day a week, Christy goes into work to do filing and stuff like that, make copies. And so uh, she's going to go in on the day that Aaron is off. Aaron has Thursdays off. So I'm usually going to have Sophia on Monday nights, and then her other grandma's going to have her on uh, Wednesday nights. So uh, we're trying to slowly get back to normal. So that's what we're trying to do. But anyway, I'll continue the story with my mother. Um, so my mother had moved in with me, and she had a heart attack in 2003 or 2004, or something like that. And then she just got kind of went downhill. And I was working at the time, and uh, it was really getting to be hard because I I used to get up. Well, I started work at six, so I would get up at four, and then um, you know like bathe, sponge bath, you know whatever. My mother in the morning, and I would make her breakfast, get her dressed for the day. And get her situated in her bed and uh, make her lunch and put the lunch in the fridge because Jim was retired. So Jim would then Jim took care of her during the day and uh, he um, would uh, give her her lunch and then take care of her. And then I'd get home from work about three o'clock. So, we, you know, we did that for a long time, but then it was just getting hard on me. But and I, that sounds awful to say. It really does say awful to say, you know, because if I could have my mother back now, I would do it in a minute. I really would. But at the time, it was just, I was not getting enough sleep at night because she wasn't able to roll over on her own. So she would, I'd, I'd hear, Sandy! And then I'd have to go and roll her over. And then, uh, you know, she, my mother was a very fidgety sleeper. So I, she would probably call me, you know, at least, at least four times a night, if not more, four or five times a night. And I would go in every time, you know, that's my mom. She took care of me. I could take care of her. But then my brothers and my sisters always came over and helped as much as they could, but they worked too. But at the time, Denise wasn't working, and uh, she said, you know what, why don't you just have mom come live with me? She, Denise lives three doors down from me. So I said, oh, okay, we'll do that. So uh, we had her living over there. And uh, my mother was... Um, at the end, she was like, like dead weight. She was just like it's really hard to move her and stuff like that. And and she'd like to get out of the bed and go into a chair. And we figured out a way we could do it. So Denise could do it too, and I could do it. And I remember I was driving. To, it's not funny, but it was funny. You know, like I told you, my family's got weird humor. We just have weird humor. But uh, I was driving to work, and to get to the expressway is about from my house was maybe five six minutes, depending on the traffic. It might be seven minutes. And I was just about ready to get on the expressway, and Denise called me. She says, where are you at? And I said, I'm just about to get on the expressway. Why? Where are you at? She says, well, I'm laying on the floor. And I go, well, where's Mom? She says, well, Mom's laying on top of me. <laughs> she, says, she says, I can't get her off because she's dead weight, and uh, there's nobody home, and uh, um, I need you to come home and help me get Mom in bed. So turned around, brought her, got my mom back into the bed. So... That was like the beginning that we knew that my mother was, you know, very close to the end. And um, I just remember my, and it was a leap year that year, and we were taking turns while being in the room with her, in the bedroom with her. And uh, my brother Michael and I were in there, and uh, it was our turn to be in there with her. And I was so afraid because she was, you could tell by her breathing that it was, it was getting close. And uh, I said, I, I know it makes no sense. It, my warped mind makes no sense, but I said I don't want her to die in a leap year. I just don't want her to die in a leap year. And Mike said it doesn't really matter what year, what time she dies. She's not going to die in a leap year. And I go, well, if she dies like at ten o'clock, what are we going to do? And he said, she's not going to die. We're not going to call anybody until after midnight, and then they'll just put on the death certificate. We'll just know that she really did, but we'll just. I go, okay, whatever. <laughs> so prayed a lot that and it's a silly prayer I mean my mother wasn't suffering but it was like it was kind of like selfish on my part but anyway my mother ended up passing like 10 45 in the morning 
Uh, so she she must have heard me. She hung on there. But uh, I don't even know. So anyway, my mother means a lot to me. And that's why I'm dedicating the month of June to my mother. And I don't know how I got onto that subject. It just kind of went over that way. But uh, if you've been with me a while, you know. It doesn't take much for me to get a detour. And that's what I'm doing on this plan now. I'm on a detour. But I'm not going to beat myself up about it because it's just not worth it. It's just, uh, um, I wouldn't be yelling at anybody else if they did something wrong. And, you know, life is just way too short, just, especially now. You know, I'm, uh, one of my favorite movies is Finding Forrester. You know, when he's talking to the, he wrote a, uh, a letter to the, to the boy and he said, you know, thanks to you that, you know, like I was able to celebrate the end of my life because, you know, he was like a, a recluse in that. And uh, it's just like I've just realized that, you know, I know it doesn't sound like death and, you know, doom and gloom. Anybody, no matter what your age, you can go like, a, you know, this could that be the end of your time right now. But, uh, you know, you get to a certain age and you kind of reflect on your life. And, you know, life is too short to be worrying about stuff. And I do realize that I put too many goals on myself. And uh, as soon as I do that, and I'm surprised nobody put that in the comments because usually you guys are really quick to do that. You will not hurt my feelings. Trust me, you will not hurt my feelings. But uh, as soon as I put a, set a goal on something, I self-sabotage. I've realized that too. And I think as soon as I put the goal of getting to Wonderland and getting to the 100 pounds, because I'm so close, I'm just so close, that uh, I, um, I tend to just rebel against myself and make poor choices and just go crazy because uh, yesterday was not a good day. I mean, I told you yesterday morning that I was dedicating it and I, I shamed my mother for as bad as I did. I just shamed my mother. And so I decided today that, no, I am, I'm not going to set a goal. I'm not going to say how many more pounds I have to get to, to 100 pounds. I'm not going to say how many pounds I have to get to get to Wonderland. I'm just going to get there and I'm just going to do it. And I'm not going to set a date and, uh, I might not show you my food every day this week. Um, I'm just um, uh, I'm just trying to get an, uh, my frame of mind back. I, I had it so well through this whole pandemic. I, I was doing so well through the whole pandemic. And I, I realized that the reason I was doing so well was I wasn't setting any little goals at myself. I was just, the only goal I was setting is to have a small loss no matter what it was, which is a manageable goal for me. But as soon as I put a number on it, as soon as I say I got to lose 1.1 pounds to get to uh, the next set of digits, or as soon as I say I got to lose 7 pounds to get to a 100-pound loss, or as soon as I say I got to lose 11 pounds to get to a Wonderland, you know, I'm just, I, I shoot myself in the foot. It's just like, I am I just go crazy. And so, uh, you know, as Oprah would say, an aha moment, my aha moment is that uh, I can't set goals. So um, I... Not going to tell you how many pounds I have to get to a certain spot. Once I get there, I'm going to say, "Hey, I hit 100 pounds." You guys can keep track. You can read, and you can like go on and on and think, "Oh, Sandy's almost there. Sandy's almost there." But uh, I, um, I just realized that that's what I can't do. I just can't do that, and I, and I know I can't do it. It's so, um, eh, I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it because um, I, I have to have a better attitude, and and I have to have the same attitude every day. And if I have the attitude with, you know, I'm going to screw up, I'm not going to make it, it's too close, I'm, you know, I can't do that. I just know I can't do that. So I'm not going to do that anymore. This was like a rambling video. Because you know what? I went for my parathyroid scan this morning. And thankfully, in Michigan, today was the first day you could have somebody come in with you. So Jim was able to go into the hospital with me. And... Um, I thought it was just going to be an ultrasound, and it ended up it was an MIR, MRI scan, and I had to go in that tube, and it was like, oh, it was terrible, and I have panic attacks, I have anxiety, and uh, when she was explaining it to me, I just, uh, you know, I thought it was going to be a quick, you know, because Jim and I had planned, because he was going to go to work, and my appointment was at 8.30, it took us like 45 minutes to get there. I thought this, the test will be about 10 or 15 minutes. I'll be done, and then you'll be home by 9.30, 10 o'clock. We'll be all set. Oh, no. I got there at 8.30. Well, I got there earlier because I had paperwork and stuff to fill out. But my appointment, they took me right at 8.30, but she explained that uh, the first part of it, the, they had to inject a dye into me, and then I had to wait to have the dye go through my body. And then they had to do a, a quick, well, it wasn't quick for me. When you have a panic attack, it's not quick. And they put me in this thing, and the, the, the thing was like this close to my face, like right there. And it was like like this. And I was like, ah! 
<laughs> and I, I said, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. And the, the, I had a really good, uh, technician. She said, you can do this. You can do this. And so then, uh, I said, no, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. She said, you can do this. You can put any, you, anything you want to put your mind to, you can do. So she said, and here your husband can come and hold your hand, but you can't talk to him because you can't talk during the test. So she told Jim, she says, you talk to her. And Jim says, I don't talk because <laughs> he doesn't, Jim doesn't talk. He says, she says, well, you can talk encouraging words to him. And he said, she knows I don't talk. So she said, well, can you hold her, her hand? <laughs> he says, I can hold her hand. So he held my hand and uh, so I said my rosary. And I didn't have my rosary with me, but I have my fingers. Because if you're a Catholic, you know, rosaries are 10. So you just, you know, like you just do it like that. And then you just, what I do is I just go one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, like that. And then when I do the first decade, I go one with my other hand. So uh, I did, I started doing the rosary for that. And then um, I got done with the 10 minutes and then she readjusted the machine and did something else. And I had to lay there for another 20 minutes. So, oh. so I, I did it again. So I started saying my, so I said a whole rosary got a whole rosary in and then she says okay you know that's it so i sat up and then she says now we'll wait an hour and i go wait an hour she says yeah we got to do this all over again in another hour and i went oh I, you didn't tell me that she says well i was going to tell you that but when you had your little panic attack i didn't think this that was the time to tell you and i go well i'm glad you didn't so we went and sat in the waiting room for an hour and then she brought me back and she set me on the, ta the table and she said you know we're going to do the same thing she said i didn't want to tell you this before but I, I'm going to tell you now because I think you need to be prepared. But when you're done, we're going to put you into the tube. <laughs> and into the CAT scan, into the thing or whatever. She says, but you'll only be in there a minute. And I said, a minute. And she says, one minute. And I says, well, okay. And then I said, uh, I guess I'll be okay. And she said, well, we have to leave the room so you'll be in the room completely alone. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> Second rosary, done. <laughs> in the machine, come back out. So um, I'm supposed to get my results back at the end of the week. Such a baby. Such a baby I was. Big baby. Big baby. So anyway, this is going to be a really long video, and I so apologize. So I'm just going to tell you what I'm having for dinner because uh, I'm not going to show you because I'm going to end the video now. Oh, before I end the video, though, I did find the picture. See? I found my picture. That's Jerry Van Dyke. This is Denise. That's my sister, Sue. Suzula. This is Denise Neeby. That's Mary, Mare Bear. And there's Sandy, Sandra. And that's Jerry Van Dyke. That's Luther from Coach. The nicest, nicest man. The nicest, nicest man. But he wouldn't let his wife didn't want to get her picture taken because we even asked for her to get a picture taken too. I think we did get a picture with her now that I'm thinking about it. I don't, I don't have it though. That would be on Denise's camera. But. Rambling, 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 rambling rose I was today. So think of a better opening. Sorry about being so long-winded. Sorry about being off track. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I know I'm going to do it. But I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to do it. But I'm going to do it. <laughs> so, All right. Uh, if you're new to my channel, leave a comment. Uh, subscribe. Hit that like button. Oh, that was another thing. And, and share it, blah, 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 all that good stuff. But um, I, my Instagram account, I had an Instagram account that I opened up, I think, in 2015. Never went on it. Never went on it. So on Friday, I went on it and did a, um, a quick um, video because I was on a Zoom call with uh, Dish with D on Saturday. So I did a really quick video. And then today, my account was hacked. And so I've had thank you from everybody. Heather Rose Up, Jones Pointed Plate. Uh, Dish with D, Ange at Smack Vision, uh, Esther, Esther, uh, Esther Newman, she's married to Paul Newman. Uh, they all let me know. And so I went on there and I put reported them as spam and I also restricted my account. So if you get any things from them, it's a scam. It's not me. I'm, I'm not on Instagram. I took myself off today. So that's about it. And now I am done. Now I really, truly am done. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.